What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again in today people. Today we are talking about weapon crafting. But before we get into it, I want to issue kind of a content warning. Not for spoilers, no 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 no, but a warning for those people who don't understand humor, or sarcasm, or being flippant, or a little bit of showmanship, or people playing devil's advocate. Because I am most likely going to have takes in regards to weapon crafting that some of you might not like. Gas, shock, horror. I know, a differing opinion. Much like I did with Stasis. Before Stasis was released and I was 150% vindicated in my opinions. But hey, details. Now I trust most of my viewers are rational, reasonable human beings who do not want their news delivered to them by another copy-paste personality-less robot. If you're not the sort to need a copy-paste hype man to fuel your flames of hype as you enter into Witch Queen, then you'll probably have a good time. But for the delicate few, for the souls whose enjoyment of things is tarnished, the moment anyone dares to have a different opinion than you, leave now or forever hold your peace. There's actually a lot in this twab, from weapon crafting to a sort of weapons 3.0. Two simple buffs and nerfs. As these are three wildly different topics, I would like to break these down in their own video with their own commentary. They seem like they'd just be subjects that probably should get more than a bullet point in a larger video. I figure that makes it easier to digest for the audience. You can pick and choose what you want to watch, and I get three videos, instead of one 30 to 40 minute long one, which is honestly just a monstrosity to edit anyways. So yeah, easy for me, easy for you. I see that as a win-win all around. However, if there's not enough content or if I just don't have time, I may end up lumping them in together anyways. So we'll see how it all works out. Welcome to the Enclave. Crafting a legendary weapon from scratch isn't a simple matter. Finding patterns, think weapon blueprints, collecting materials, and building your weapon is the starting point. After crafting your tool of destruction, you'll begin to unlock its full potential through combat. Begin your quest to craft. Early in the Witch Queen campaign, you will be given an introductory quest that runs you through the ins and outs of crafting. In the first and second missions in the Witch Queen, free to all players, guardians will uncover the Deep Sight ability and be introduced to the Enclave. Now, this is exciting because if I'm reading this correctly, that says that players, all players, regardless of if you buy the Witch Queen or are free to play, should have access to weapon crafting, at least in some fashion. Lessening one of the points of contention that this could potentially be a pay to win system. As given the way that weapon crafting works, players locked out of it would definitely be at a significant disadvantage. And my not so controversial hot take, but if Bungie's going to have weapon crafting, more so specifically weapon crafting on what is essentially a bunch of reissued weapons for the world loot pool, weapons that have been reissued a third or fourth time, then it doesn't make a lot of sense for Bungie to put that behind a paywall. Raid weapons? New activity weapons? Sure, great! And this makes world loot, even in its reissuing, not as bad as, say, when Gnawing Hunger was Sunset, and then brought back as a new super special awesome non-Sunset version, with basically the same exact god roll. And while you can go, But Joker, they're using the same models! True, but... And or, but, hear me out. Unlike when the gnawing hunger was removed from the game because it was sunset, only to come back a week later or something with the exact same perk pool, or near enough not to matter. This is weapons basically rebuilt from the ground up for the new system. And while I will always prefer new content, this is enough of an update to justify re-releasing weapons while sunsetting was little more than a, well, now you can't use it. Go fuck yourself. With this, you will still be able to use your old gear. However, as any trading card player knows, the new gimmick is probably going to be way more stronger than the old one. That said, we could also see a paradigm where old weapons have access to perks or perk combinations that are no longer available because Bungie wants to kinda sorta nerf the meta without really nerfing the meta. So yeah, props to Bungie for allowing new light players to have access 
to the new toys all while justifying the reissuing of weapons through this Weapon 3.0 system. But back to the article. This is where you will begin to shape your first glaive, a brand new weapon archetype being introduced into Witch Queen. All the necessary materials will be provided for your first crafted weapon. But you'll also be given a short tutorial on how to find those materials for future crafting. A subset of weapons and archetypes will be craftable from the start but more will be added in the future. Now, we know that Bungie is looking to get around 80% of the weapons to be craftable in the game at some point. As for the crafting of weapons and the gathering of materials, I have a sneaking suspicion that it won't be the 8,000 materials you already have. Bungie is already depreciating some currencies, and we know that they will be introducing a new currency with crafting. I have a feeling that this is going to be a lot like Taken King, or at least very similar to Taken King, where you had to grind out a very specific material in order to craft the swords. And that's fine. This puts everybody on a level playing field when it comes to the start of crafting, and doesn't punish anybody who may have taken a break or is new to the game. But Joker, that's you praising Bungie twice in a row. You're supposed to be a hater. You can't have complex and varied opinions on things. In order to shape your future tools of destruction, you will need to do a little bit of research first. Patterns are your first requirement. Some will be acquired through quest completion, while others can be earned by completing various gameplay objectives. Once you have earned your desired pattern, it can be crafted any time with the required materials. Now, it's all about the mixings. So if it wasn't abundantly clear, Destiny 2's weapon crafting system is going to be a rather drawn out and bloated process. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. If it's too overtuned like Transmog was when it first released, people will bitch and it'll be toned down. But you also don't want it so toned down that everybody has god rolls quick, fast, and in a hurry. That's not good for keeping players engaged, nor is it good for the various metas, be it early game PvE, end game PvE, PvP, end game PvP, or Gambit for whomever plays that. However, and I'm sure this is going to be a point of contention that many a fanboy are going to get butt hurt over me criticizing, it really doesn't matter how much bloat is in the system. It's not a matter of if the meta will become homogenized. It's when. How long will it take from the start of Witch Queen for there to be the five weapons with the five perks to rule them all? And that's all anybody ever uses, at least until they're nerfed. And with weapon crafting, players have less of an excuse for not having the current metas. If you think must-have Galahorn was bad, hold on to your ass. Now it'll be must-have X, and that can be a reasonable expectation. It doesn't matter if you like using it or not. But that has less to do with Bungie and more to do with kinda Destiny's toxic community. The details. However, things do become worse because the weapon crafting comes with a side of RNG on your RNG on your RNG. After reaching the Enclave and crafting your first glaive, randomly rolled weapons throughout the game have a chance to drop with a new ability, Deep Sight Resonance. This will be used as you begin to target specific traits to craft. As an example, if you find a Deep Sight Resonant Legendary Auto Rifle with the Rampage perk, you can complete an objective and extract the essence of the perk and then craft a weapon with Rampage or another perk that increases damage. While this still just means it's only a matter of time until everybody has all the same gear with all the same perks, adding even more RNG to a system is not something anybody wants in a system about controlling their loadouts. Not only do you have to get the weapon to drop with your desired perks, but that weapon also has to have the deep sight trait. Depending on how rare that trait is, that could end up being more trouble than it's worth, to the point that the system itself becomes rather redundant, if not outright pointless. If I'm still going to have to grind out RNG rolls of weapons in the hope that I can get an RNG roll of a weapon with a specific perk, then really all the system truly is, is less of a crafting system and more of a bad luck protection system. Say I want a 5 out of 5 hand cannon. Well, I have to get the blueprints. Then I have to grind out the materials if I don't have them already. Then I have to grind out the weapons that have the deep sight perks. And that weapon has to have the deep sight perk with the perk that I wish to extract. 
Now, this could all just be academic and a non-issue, or it could make the entire system pointless, because I have just as much a chance as getting all the perks and deep sights that I need to make a god roll as I have getting that god roll. It all depends on the balance. The saving grace, however, to look at the positives, it looks as if, according to their example, you're taking the essence of a perk, and you're storing it, and you can use these essences on any weapon. Better yet, it looks like they're grouping perks by family. So say I get an auto rifle with Rampage. The hand cannon I want can only have kill clip. It appears that doesn't matter. I can extract that AR Rampage essence and use it to unlock kill clip on my hand cannon. Leveling your weapon in enhanced traits. Once a weapon is crafted, Guardians may begin to increase its level by using it in activities and by defeating enemies. This is where the bulk of your crafting playtime will be. The more you use your weapon, the faster you'll unlock its full potential. Our goal through this system is to give players a reason to invest in their weapons, far beyond what masterworking could offer in the past. Each weapon can now act as a long tail pursuit as you look to make your freshly crafted weapon the best it can be. It can be intimidating to start making decisions on how you build your weapons, so we are giving you the ability to reshape your crafted weapons in the Enclave if you want to mix up the components of your weapon after you finish crafting them. You can switch up the barrel, mags, or treats you choose, so you don't feel like you've been locked down one path forever. So the first question is, what exactly is Bungie's plans for negative stat mags and barrels? If you look over the barrels and mags, there are clearly ones that you should always take, and ones you should never take, and ones you'll settle on if the rest of the weapon is a god roll. Full bore, for example, could ruin an otherwise perfect shotgun. So why would I ever take that over full choke? Why would I take steady rounds when assault mag and accurized rounds exist? You wouldn't. So what's the point of these perks now? I don't know. But it'll be interesting to see if Bungie does anything with them, because I do think that many of these perks could use a rework, so it's not so blatantly obvious, because if they don't, at that point, Bungie should just take these trash perks out of the game or off weapons that they're not useful on. This also sounds kind of like the original masterworking system, or even kind of like the Destiny 1 leveling system that nobody really liked before you could just dump a bunch of materials into it. However, the problem with the Destiny 1 system was you'd spend hours grinding out to level up a weapon that you might not like. What I foresee happening is what always happens. Bungie thinks people are going to sit around and unlock all of these weapons and grind and craft out everything. And while some people will certainly do that, most people ain't got time for that. What people will do is use services like LightGG that let them see everything about the weapon. They'll then go, okay, pulse rifles, 140 hand cannons, shotguns, and fusions are the meta. And these five perks on these five guns will be best in slot. And that's what people will build towards, all while being cognizant of seasonal champion mods. Like, do I need a bow? Well, okay, I guess I'll build a bow. And when Bungie buffs and nerfs the meta or it shifts, they'll just wait for the usual suspects to make a video about it and craft those new weapons that are now newly meta. Hell, a new seasonal video series, What You Should Be Crafting, will be in every YouTuber's catalog right next to Xur videos and weekly update videos. Because the weapon crafting system is asking for a lot from players to fall into place. So why would players invest and chase after anything that isn't the best of the best, unless they've already gotten the best of the best? It looks like Bungie is aware of that inevitable homogenization, and they chose a path with two or three layers of RNG to bloat the grind. And the balance will be on how rare are blueprints that are not part of a quest, or how rare is deep sight perks. Only time will tell, but these are things we should be looking at. I do hope that Bungie is quick to react to the weapon crafting system. If it's too bloated, then it becomes largely pointless and we're back to square one. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. But above all else, stay frosty.